Hello everyone, I am Ivy the Occultist on YouTube and on Instagram, and if you are not familiar with my channel, I am primarily a chaos magician, but I do practice a lot of different things within the occult community, so I just call myself an occultist to encompass everything that it is that I do. I've kind of bounced around the occult community for a long time. For the past 15-20 years, I have gone from witchcraft to ceremonial magic to hermetic Kabbalah to shamanistic styles of practicing, back to witchcraft, then paganism, and now I'm really deep in the trenches of chaos magic for the past five years or so. But one thing that has been pretty consistent across my occult practice has been planetary magic. And my practice has kind of changed over the years how I approach this. I know uh, traditional ceremonial magicians may work with angelic beings or Olympic spirits when it comes to doing planetary magic. I personally don't have any sort of desire to work with any angels or demons or any similar entities like that. It just doesn't personally call to me. So my planetary magic practice now is a little bit more of a chaos magic approach meets planetary magic but I wanted to sit down and kind of share that with you today because I've gotten a lot of questions from people how I actually go about planetary magic or incorporating that into my practice I have already done a two episode series we were gonna do more episodes but then that ended up not working out but I did a, a series for planetary magic for beginners with the astrologer Molly Victoria so I'm gonna link both of those episodes down below because because in episode one, we introduced the seven traditional planets, and in episode two, we talked about how to actually invoke those planetary energies into your rituals. So this video is not really going to be a how-to guide. It's more gonna be me sitting down, talking about my personal practice, things that I do, things that I don't anymore, that I don't care about, because I don't particularly enjoy doing these super long ceremonies anymore. I used to really like doing that, and now I am all about quick efficiency, so it is definitely changed over time, but I've kind of got this video broken down to three different sections. First, we're going to talk about planetary timing, and that's probably going to be the biggest section because it's the biggest, most important piece to my planetary magic practice. But then I also want to talk about sigils using planetary grids, and then I want to talk about what I actually do during rituals when I'm working with a particular planet. So those will be the three categories. And again, not everybody is going to agree with how I practice, especially if you are a bit more of a traditionalist the way that I practice now may not appeal to some people, and that's okay because our magical practices are very personal. So let's start with planetary timing. This is the biggest component to my planetary magic practice, and there's a couple subcategories that go into planetary timing. There's the transits, the days, and the hours. So let's talk about planetary transits first. So typically each Sunday I look at the whole week ahead to see what the planetary transits are, and a transit is basically the way the planet moves moves. It's the motion of the planets through the zodiac in our perspective here on Earth. So a transit basically just means where is that planet in its orbit? Where is it at? What is it facing? You have certain planets that can face each other in different ways that can either create harsh aspects or harmonious aspects. So transits is just, it's all about getting a feel for where the planets are in the sky and how I want to take advantage of that energy. So typically on Sundays, I sit down, I take a look at the planets ahead just to kind of see what energy Energies I'm working with for the week because if something magnificent comes up I want to be able to take advantage of that and sometimes if there's a really big ritual that I'm looking forward to doing I will be planning that stuff out like months in advance for example I'm getting married this year and I planned out our wedding date two years <laughs> before the fact so I took into account my own birth chart as well as my partner's birth chart because I also think that's really important to understand your own natal astrology and figure out how it pertains to the stars above and you can kind of predict potentially how things are gonna go that way I mean it's not perfect but I really like using the birth chart in that way I also looked at where the other planets were as well so I looked at Venus I wanted to see what Venus was doing that day I looked at the Sun sign I looked at mercury there were all these different things that factored into me choosing the day mercury is not going to be in retrograde and yes more planets can go retrograde than just mercury I know everybody's obsessed with mercury right now and mercury retrogrades but Literally all planets go through a retrograde period, and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit too. But for big rituals like this, like a marriage ceremony, I really want to plan these things months, if not a year in advance to really get the right energy for the day. And for me, I have found that my big life moments are much more successful, much more easy. There's not as much friction. Beforehand, I feel like I was just kind of going in blind, and now I feel like I have a little bit better of an idea of what to expect. And for a 
while I contemplated, is this a self-fulfilling prophecy? Is this just something where I'm reading what the planetary transits are and then I'm acting it out because I think it's gonna go a certain way and then it ends up going a certain way because of my perceptions of that? And so what I did in the beginning of my planetary magic practice is I would sit down and I would journal after the fact what happened that day or what happened that week. And then I would go back and look at the planetary transits to see how that energy was personally affecting me because I wanted to get the most unbiased opinion possible. And after a while, I started to see these patterns develop of, oh, when this transit happens or something like this, it tends to make me feel this way based on the data of what I have with all of my journaling sessions previously. So I definitely think that's something to incorporate into your planetary magic practice is how these transits are actually affecting you and try to do it before actually knowing what's going to happen so you can get that unbiased data. Another thing that I like to look at is retrogrades because as I mentioned, more than just Mercury goes into a retrograde period. And typically I have found that retrogrades are not necessarily the best time for manifesting. Retrogrades are really about a period of pause, of reflection, of rest and reset and renew all of those themes that pertain to that particular planet. So if I'm doing a spell that I want to work with Mercury or Mars or whatever, and then I see that Mercury or Mars is in retrograde during that period, I would absolutely wait until that planet is in forward motion again. And retrogrades, by the way, they are, the planets aren't technically spinning backwards. It's more of an optical illusion from our perspective here on Earth. But there is that symbolic element of it when a planet is seemingly moving forward in motion. That is a better time that people say for manifesting and for going after what you want. Whereas the retrogrades is more of a, okay, let's pause, reflect, renew, all of those things. And yes, I have personally noticed a massive difference working with planets in retrograde versus forward motion. So I definitely do all of my manifesting work when that planet is in forward motion. I also think it's important to consider your own birth chart when it comes to returns. A return is when a planet returns back to that same zodiac sign that it was in when you were born. So let's say you have a Mars in Aries and usually Mars spends a couple months in each sign. I think it's like six weeks or something like that. And with retrogrades, it can actually stay in there up to like seven, eight months, but I digress. When Mars finally returns to that point of Aries, the same as it is in your birth chart, you are going to experience certain themes coming back up. It's almost like a cycle being completed. And I'm not really gonna deep dive into natal astrology in this video, so definitely look into returns because that's a whole nother subject that I could go down. But for example, I just experienced my Mars return and unfortunately Mars was in retrograde, so it ended up lasting, rather than lasting two months, it ended up lasting like eight months or something ridiculous. And Mars returns, they can be a little harsh in my experience. Mars rules over our action, drive, our energy levels, aggression. So when my Mars was returning, I felt extremely lethargic. I had no energy for anything because that cycle was completing. I have also noticed when I started tracing this back that every single car accident that I have ever gotten in was during a Mars return which is insane, right? That is so crazy to know once you start understanding your own birth chart and you can go back and look at the planetary transits of what happened during specific times in your life, you can really start to see the patterns develop. So I personally like looking at returns just to see how I'm personally energetically feeling because if I'm completely lethargic because I'm experiencing a Mars return right now, I don't really feel the need to push myself to manifest, to do this spell. What I need to be doing is resting and reflecting. So that's another thing to consider. But I also want to point out that this is kind of where planetary magic meets natal astrology. And this video really is about planetary magic, not necessarily natal astrology. Natal astrology is the study of one's own birth chart and understanding the conditions that we were born under and how it affects our life, etc. Whereas planetary magic is where you're using those planetary energies in spell work. So I don't really want to dive too deep into natal astrology in this video because again, not what I intended this video to be, but I did just want to briefly mention that. So let's move on to another section of planetary timing that I think is really important to discuss, and that is planetary days. If you have watched the Planetary Magic for Beginners series that I did with Molly Victoria, you might already know that each day is ruled by a particular planet. So Monday is ruled by the moon, Tuesday is ruled by Mars, Wednesday is ruled 
ruled by Mercury, and so on and so forth. And so when I can't find a planetary transit that really lines up with what I'm wanting to do, let's say I need to do a spell and I need to do it right now. I do not have the time to wait for these planets to line up to where I need them to be. So what I will do in that case is I will use planetary days and planetary hours. And I'll talk about planetary hours in a second. But I will pick a day that corresponds to the planet that I'm wanting to work with during this ritual and I will do my working on that day. For example, with my money bowls, I really like working with Jupiter because Jupiter is so expansive and abundant. It's really great for building wealth. And so I do all of my money magic on Thursdays, which is ruled by Jupiter. I do my money bowl offerings on Thursdays. I do any other type of money magic on Thursdays. So I'm really taking advantage of these planetary days. And sometimes I will do planetary hours but not very often. And I'm not really gonna go into the whole how to do planetary hours because you can find that in the planetary magic series that I did, but planetary hours is the one thing that I don't really care for. I do it sometimes, but not all the time. If I really wanna be extra, I will do planetary hours, but honestly, that's probably the one thing that I drop the most from my magical rituals because I don't want to wake up at five in the morning or whatever on some ungodly hour just to match up with a planetary hour to do a specific ritual. That gets a little bit too ritualistic for me. And again, I do enjoy a little bit of ceremony, don't get me wrong, but planetary hours, it just gets way too technical for me to a point where it's almost taking me out of my intuitive self and my psychic self. So I like to have a good balance there, but that's just me. So planetary hours and planetary days is something that I really utilize when I don't have the ideal transits in the sky. When the, the planets are not doing what I need them to do in the sky, I result to days and hours. The next part of my planetary magic practice is through sigils. As a chaos magician, I love sigils. I use them in almost every single working I do. Doesn't matter what I'm doing, I am almost always putting some sort of sigil in there somewhere, whether I'm carving it on a candle, I'm writing it on an intention paper, whatever it may be, there's, there's a sigil present. And I usually create my sigils from planetary grids. So I explained how to use planetary grids grids in my sigil video, so I'll link that down below if you are interested in that technique. But you basically have grids. Actually, let me grab my grimoire and I will show you. Okay, so this is a page from my grimoire that has the planetary grids for the seven traditional planets. And so what I do is I create my sigils with these grids depending on which planet I'm wanting to work with. So if I am wanting to work with Jupiter, Hopefully this focus is okay. You can see that that is the Jupiter grid right here. So I will create my sigil using this specific grid. And then we have Saturn, Jupiter, you know, so on and so forth. The moon is the biggest grid. Look at that one. That's huge. And it's just another way of bringing in an aspect of planetary magic. You're really bringing in the numerology of each planet by using those planetary grids. So I like it. I find it useful, especially because sigils are so effective, so quick and easy. If I don't want to go through like a whole elaborate ceremony where I'm invoking energies and all that stuff, I can create a sigil just by using the planetary grid to connect with that planet a little bit better. Okay, so let's talk about what I actually do during ritual. So let's say I've figured out all of my planetary timing. I know when I'm doing this spell and what types of energies I'm working with and what planet I want to work with. Uh, maybe I've created a sigil using the planetary grid, but I wanted to share just some extra things I do during ritual that help me invoke those planetary energies. And the first thing sounds very, very silly, but it's dressing up. I really do try to embody the energy of that planet when I'm doing a specific ritual with a specific planet. So each planet has different types of energy, right? And they all have different color associations as well. Like you've got Mercury, which rules over our mind, communication, intellect. It's all of our mental thought processes. It's all about transportation and information technology. Whereas let's say Saturn is about restriction and boundaries and justice. There's a lot of different things that go with Saturn. I actually really love using Saturn for 
any protection spell because it's just such great energy for setting boundaries and protecting yourself. But I really try to embody that energy. Let's say I am working with Mercury. I really want to embody that energy in ritual. So I am going to dress in a way that really relates to the mind, the intellect, thought processes, information technology. I'm thinking of all of these themes when I'm putting an outfit together. And I'm also bringing in the color of that planet as well for some color association. And so I have everything set up at this point. I'm dressed a certain way. I know when I'm doing the ritual and all of that. I get to a point where I need to go into an altered state of consciousness because as a chaos magician, one of my things is that I think it's really, really important to get into a Gnostic state, which is essentially an altered state of consciousness in ritual. So that way you can access your subconscious mind and anything beyond your subconscious mind, anything that doesn't typically exist in our mundane physical reality needs to be reached by altered states of consciousness. So when I'm going into my meditations, I'm really meditating. I, well, I start by meditating on the color of the planet. So let's say I'm working with Mars because Mars, again, rules over action, drive, aggression, temperament, movement, you know, maybe I just want to really bring in that warrior spirit. Let's say that I am, I need to complete some sort of project or do some sort of task that requires me to get into a warrior-like mentality. Like I'm going to war. I've got my battle cry on. This needs to get done. I need that push of energy. I need the aggression. I'm going to work with Mars for something like that. And Mars correlates with the color red or crimson or orange, kind of in that shade family. So not only am I going to be dressing up in similar colors that make me feel that way. Maybe I'll even paint my face like a warrior for that ritual. But when I go into my altered state of consciousness, I am visualizing the color crimson or red or orange or whatever and allowing it to start in the center of my being. So for me, that's my belly button. And then I visualize that color moving up and down through my arms, down through my legs, up through the top of my head until my entire body is filled with that color that corresponds to the planet. And so I really am invoking the energy of Mars. I mean, the more elements that you can bring in that correlate with the planet that you're wanting to work with, the easier it is to get into that mindset and to really bring in those archetypal energies. And you can even consider the elements too. Like Mars, if we're going to continue going with that example, Mars correlates to the fire element. Obviously, every planet has different associations with the elements. And so Mars being connected to fire, I might want to do a spell that really brings in fire rather than using earth or air or water. So I think that's another thing too. I'm going to be working with fire magic a lot more when I'm working with Mars. Whereas if I'm working with Mercury, I'm probably going to be working with air and maybe a little bit of water. Sometimes Mercury is associated with water. Although for me personally, I see Mercury as just straight air, <laughs> but that's just my own personal correspondences. And I know there are like certain herbs and plants and days and so many other correspondences that correlate to the planets that you probably could bring into a ritual. But I don't really, I don't really utilize any of that. I don't know why, because I actually work with plant spirits a lot. But for me, it's really planetary timing, sigils, and dressing up. And then when I go into an altered state of consciousness, I visualize the color that's associated with the planet, let it fill my entire body, and then proceed with the working, whether I'm charging and activating a sigil, whether I'm doing some sort of candle magic, whether I'm doing some sort of poppet magic or talisman magic. I definitely, that is probably one thing I use planetary magic a lot for is creating my amulets and my talismans. I always bring in a little bit of planetary energy when it comes to creating my amulets and talismans and I know that's a really popular thing for people as well so anyways I hope that this was helpful let me know <laughs> I don't see a lot of people practicing planetary magic so it's not something that I talk about a lot on my channel but it is a massive part of my magical practice that I just don't really share that often because I don't see people really being interested in it so if this is a topic that interests you please let me know in the comments below if you want more information about planetary magic or spells for particular planets, you know, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. I am doing this video to gauge interest and see if there are enough people that are interested in magic like this that don't necessarily do planetary magic from the traditional route, which is working with those angelic beings. This is more of a agnostic approach, I would say. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye. <music>